Hello, everybody. College football is all but finished. The NFL is winding down. And admit it, you're not watching the NBA until April anyway. So what better place to be in the new year than right here with your favorite broskies in basketball so you can get this bread. Recording live from somewhere. This is one and done. Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media Trade. Welcome to One and Done, your fast break of college basketball information. Powered by DrRoto. Dot com. I am your sometimes humble host. My name is Jay Heinrich, and I am the conductor, if you forgot, of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train, and it feels so good to be back. You can find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. Let's get right to one of the absolute best in the business to do it. It is El Capitan himself, the captain of the Green Screens Media Ship. Follow him on X at NC Holland 34 the OG Money Mike. That is Mr. Mike Holland. What it do, baby? What it do, my friends? What it do? Glad to have you back, man. A couple of weeks hiatus on the moon. So uh, happy new year to everyone out there once again. I know we had the, uh, the Live Before Lock show, but this is our first show that we're doing, uh, you know, pre-recorded, well, I guess live, but, you know, for tomorrow's slate. And it's a Saturday slate. I'm a little disappointed that DraftKings decided to uh, – not give us a, a little more coin out there and some better tournaments. But, hey, you know what? We decided, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and make our own again since, uh, unfortunately, if you joined the last one we did, it didn't fill. We didn't know if it didn't fill, it wouldn't resize. So we apologize for that. I think we got five or six people already in it. We are going to drop the link. We'd love for you guys to join us up. We're going to do a 20 max here, $3 entry. Um, I think on DraftKings as well, we have the $12 entry that you can get into. You try and win yourself two thousand dollars i myself on a little bit of a heater i have five of six in profit over the last uh, week so uh, looking to uh, to keep it going the uh, the old balance has been creeping up so excited to uh, get it going tonight i thought we weren't going to hit you with the fire emoji drop the fire emoji in the live chat for mike being on fire just for him just for yeah. him but of course of course he's last in the intros but you bet your bottom he is First in your hearts, the Baron of Bread of Green Screens Media. Find him in those Twitter streets at Fantasy Nav. He's Eric the Blue. That's Mr. Eric Romup. What's happening? Man, I am here doing my best Mike Holland impression. I'm here with a live sweat right now. <laughs> I'm not exactly going Mike fashion. I'm not sitting in first place trying to fend anyone off. I'm on the other side. It's the climb. I'm currently sitting in sixth place with uh with a pretty low owned hill who's uh who's going nice and white hot for me. So we'll be here sweating this one out for the next hour or so, and we will be here in good company. Mama rocks, time to party. Finally, the conductor is back. Finally, let's go. The conductor has come back. Back to one and done. Thanks, Mama Rocks. Good Our guy, Nape C. Hustle, down to ride. Mama Rocks, cleaning it up. Salute to Mike and Eric as well. We know. We all have our favorites. You you made a good choice. <laughs> let's be honest. Cam checking back in. Tonight's slate to the moon. On to tomorrow. And then, like we talked about earlier, we dropped our DraftKings link there in the chat. If you are tuning in on YouTube or on Facebook, if you're tuning in on Twitter, get over to YouTube. At, yeah. great, at Green Screens Media. While you're there, not only can you click that link, you can click those like and subscribe buttons. Can't wait to jump into this money 12 gamer. Yeah, I saw Myron in those in that live chat too saying DraftKings being stingy with these Saturday contests. It was the first thing that I noticed Ooh. when we got on today to, to to check and look at what the slate was gonna be. And it was that there, yeah, there's the 2K to first, and there's not much else. Uh, and then the there's game. and then there's the 12 game slate that's like two hours later that's only 500 to first. I'm like, there's like 24 games on DraftKings. Yeah, yeah whatever. It's a whole other story. Uh, last week of the NFL season, boys. Going to get these big contests <laughs> soon enough. They're coming. 
They're coming. Uh, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Hop into that live chat like Myron and Mama Rocks and Cam and Napier and uh, everybody else like you normally do. Hop in there. Anthony G, we've, we've seen you lurking and chatting, commenting too. Hop in the, that live chat if you're around. Uh, make sure you smash those buttons for your boys. But let's get to the slate as we were uh, we're teasing it enough. Let's get right to it. Let's get a little overview of the slate. And I'm going to start with the captain uh, with uh, your comments on tomorrow's slate. Uh, yeah, man. Well, first of all, I didn't know Eric was sweating over here, man. I'm going to have to on the hey, side you know, here when you guys are talking. I was going to leave it. We're just going to let it slide. Let it slide. Let it say anything. Right. Uh, we're I'm, not going to do it fourth. He's not going to oh, do anything. I'll, I'll, break, I'll break into coverage every few minutes. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, don't, <laughs> Let's go. you don't have to hear him comment about it every five minutes like I do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So good times right here. Uh, yeah. For, you, Dad. There you go. First look at the slate, man. Um, I mean, first thing kind of jumps out. We don't really have like the the mega 10K guy, right? 9,500. Um, only a few guys really over that 9K threshold. There's a ton of value already. So you're going to kind of be able to do whatever you want, play whoever you want, um, any kind of style of play you want. So although I do like the uh, the tighter price slates where it makes it really, really tough, um, you know, it's been a little while since we've kind of had one of these. So, you know, maybe which game goes to overtime, uh, the super stack, it, different things like that, man. So, yeah, uh, just first look, man, it's just you can kind of do what you want, which is kind of nice for, uh, for a change here. Eric? Yeah, the the essential question is the uh, is the last one that, that Mike said there, right? Times like these, you have to ask yourself, do you super stack? Do you overload the very much so marquee game that we will talk about soon and just try to, you know, pick off the best plays from a handful of different games? Also, we are fully into the swing of, of conference play, right? So this is a time of year where minutes and rotations start to get a little bit tighter. They certainly have in some spots. And also just looking at the board overall, like 10 of these 12 games have spreads of seven points or less, right? So like we should have some some competitive games. We should have some fun action. You know, you don't have to worry about these wild blowout scenarios where, you know, a starter gets a little bit more rest or some rando off the bench goes six or seven X, right? So a little bit easier to forecast. But yeah, I mean, the the board's wide open. So I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping right into this one. Yeah, let's do that. And while we do, make sure you smash those like and subscribe buttons for your broskies. Uh, tell tell the uh, the hoop heads in your life about one and done and green screens media and get them to hit those buttons too. We're up over 700, making sure that we tell everybody how much we appreciate y'all for doing that. If you haven't already, hit that button for us. And let's get into that 12-game slate. Um Showcase games, you know, we like to do three or four of these games uh, on these big slates, and we're going to give you a handful here for tonight, um, starting with, oh, look at these totals, guys. I mean, they we're all the way down. We've got uh, the West Virginia and Houston, 131. That's not super appealing. We're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, maybe, who knows? But, uh, you know, 171 is where we're starting here with Kentucky uh, traveling to Florida, Kentucky actually one point uh, favorites on the road, eighth offensive efficiency, 48th defensive efficiency, and 24th in tempo with uh, 235th in bench minutes uh, used there. So, you know, bottom bottom half of the country there, uh, pretty tight rotation. Florida, 31st offensive efficiency, 58th defensive efficiency, 13th in tempo. Both of these teams get up and down, Mike, 164th in the bench. So, yeah, going to go to you, Mike, first here. Again, we mentioned how they were 235th in uh, bench minutes used, running a tight eight or nine man rotation here. So, what are you looking at with the Wildcats? Yeah, I mean, you love the total of this game, right? Like, it just jumps out and it's like, oh, man, like, I want to get at least two, maybe three pieces. But, you know, the pricing's there. You can get to three. Four is kind of wild, but, I mean, if the game goes into the 90s, like, <laughs> just a lot of fantasy production. So, on the Kentucky side, it's a little annoying, right, because these guys, what, a month ago, start of the season, were all in kind of the 6K range, these guards. Um, now they've crept up into the mid-7s. So, it's going to be tough to figure out who to play here. It's almost a, almost a spin-the-wheel situation. We'll start with Antonio Reeves. He's a, 
He's been the, the hot hand right now, back-to-back 40 fantasy point games, uh, taking a ton of shots. He's making a bunch of shots. So uh, you love to see that. If he keeps the hot hand going, you know, you could see another 40-point uh, fantasy game. But, you know, uh, built more for tournaments um, as he's more shot dependent. Like he's not really a guy that's going to get you a bunch of assists, steals, rebound, uh, steals, rebounds, blocks. Like he's going to have to knock down his threes. He's taken 74 of those. So uh, I do like Reeves, but you'll probably have to reserve that for tournaments. Um, the guy that I really like who I don't really know what's going to happen with this ownership. It's always tough to project, um, you know, unless you have a free square like Thomas tonight. who was like 87% because he was mispriced on DraftKings. Uh, Rob Dillingham, like at 7,400. So he's a guy that comes off the bench. He kind of plays mid twenties minutes, right? But he's got almost a 30% usage rate and almost a 30% shot rate to go with a 33% assist rate. You know, he likes to shoot the three. Um, he's also pretty good at, you know, getting steals. So you love that. Um, he is a guy that can get you 35 to 40 fantasy points, especially in this type of environment. Um, he is an up and down guy going to be a lot of fun once he gets to the NBA and for 7,400, you know, he's a hundred dollars, uh, cheaper than Reeves. Reeves has been kind of a hot man, right? Um, you got all these other guys around him, you know, Shepard, Wagner, um, even Edwards is at, even though he's a forward, he's guard elder, he's a guard on DraftKings. So a little interest in Dillingham uh, for tournaments for sure. Uh, but really the guy that I'm kind of keying in on, it's it's kind of weird to say because I thought his – I thought he would get hurt more by a lot of these seven-footers returning uh, like Oyenso, um and the, the the big freshman Bradshaw. But it's Trey Mitchell's boy. actually – yeah, he's actually sliding down to his kind of his natural position, the four spot, Trey Mitchell. Um, while the usage and shot rate – leave a little bit to desire. He's kind of doing everything else as well. Um, we know he's an all around offensive player. Uh, you know, he's coming off of a couple of really good games. Obviously that last game, um, you know, you're not going to put too, too much stock in that. It was a, a little bit of a blowout there. So look uh, for, for, for what we're going to get in this type of pace, there's going to be a lot of rebounds. Um, Florida has a bigger front line. So he's, you know, he's going to play a, a ton of minutes out there. He's a lot safer than Bradshaw and Edwards and those guys. You know, Cal trust him. That's the reason why Cal wanted to go out and get uh, keep Reeves and, and go out and get Mitchell is because you need these guys. You can't just rely on all these freshmen all the time. Um, so you kind of know what you're going to get from Trey Mitchell. Um, so I do like it. I do like the price at 7100 uh, for that forward spot. If you're building out through like the mid tier, uh, you're looking for like cash games. Um, there's probably not a probably not a safer play in this range for forwards. So I, I do like me some Trey Mitchell. These other guys, Bradshaw, Edwards, Ayinso. I just I don't think you can play them. Uh, Eric, man, uh, I don't play a lot of Reed Shepard. One, he's the most expensive guy to play, so it costs you some extra coin. Uh, is that someone that you are willing to dive in? Yeah, anytime we're talking about the most expensive player on a team, usually that's an indicator that they're probably going to be not all that popular, right? So, in a you know in a a twelve game slate, you know finding ways to create leverage is is something that is always going to be pretty interesting. With with Shepard in particular, it's it, it's it's kind of a weird spot because some of his rates are a little lackluster, right? Like he's in the mid teens for usage, for shot, for rebound. But then you get to his assist rate, twenty five percent there, and the guy is just cleaning up on stocks, four percent block, six percent steal. And Jay, just remind the people since you haven't been on the on the show for a few weeks here, what what was the uh, what was the Heinrich line? For uh, for three point percentage exactly thirty five percent thirty five. Cool. Reed Shepard is uh, he's he's over that by a hair. He's shooting fifty six percent from three. <laughs> he's taking fifty attempts. So like you know he's he's come back down to earth from his high points. Like he's got some you know some fifties on on his game log that you know he hasn't reached back and got to recently. But I mean he's just one of these like stat sheet stuffer types. You know in a large field tournament where a lot of people, again, are probably going to be looking at some of these low 7K options on the Kentucky side. Don't mind going to to Reed Shepard whatsoever. And then the other side of the sort of forgotten man coin, we've, we got we got DJ Wagner sitting here at 6.4K. If you want to get that salary savings, you can save uh, a grand, 1500 bucks or so, and move down to Wagner. His rates look a little bit stronger, 23% usage and shot. Still dishes out the ball pretty well, a 20% assist rate. So both Wagner and Shepard are guys that you can potentially stack around because they distribute so well. I mean, look, with Wagner, like he's out there for 30 minutes plus in tight games. This one is projected to be a pretty close contest. The the upside, you know, 30 plus points is is definitely on his range of outcomes. 
you know, the the thing that would be kind of a limiting factor for him is like, I, I don't know if he's got that kind of like slate breaking upside, right? He's more of like a points per dollar value kind of play or, you know, a, a kind of different way to stack and get into this game. So both these guys aren't, you know, huge priorities on their own, but I, I think they've got a role to play in terms of how you attack the Kentucky side. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you, you know, in a total like this, um, and you can get the most expensive player on a team that's projected to score 86 points. Yeah, great point. I, you know, it, it's – I don't know if, if it's going to – I would just think that more people would go to Shepard in this particular instance. I, I get the thinking, and, and you know, we like to buy these these players. We like to rush these players when they're on their way down a little bit, not mm. at their peak. So this might be a spot for Shepard here for sure. But let's uh, – Guys, Let's we just... got a we got a little bit of breaking news here. What's that? And no, it's not my it's not my standing in my current sweat. Uh, Streamyard has been getting a little busy in the background, upgrading their platform. We can get comments from Twitter now, and our first ever Twitter comment. Sam checking in. This dude is busy on those no, Twitter what's up, handles. Sam? Glad, what's up, Sam? Glad that you can make your way in here with the with the comments through Twitter now. Love love seeing it. Yeah, excellent stuff. Glad to see you there, Sam. You know, uh, you know what? I was glad to see. We're talking about these are some good teams here in this first game, and we're gonna we're gonna get across the the court here to Florida. Purdue was up 15 at halftime today, and Jack Eady <laughs> had two points. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's up. He's up there now. He's in double. He's in double figures now, but he has like 15 or 16 boards too. Like, <laughs> he's that guy. But anyways, thanks for joining us, Sam. Uh, it's a, Let's get to the other side of this game, which is Florida, of course. Mike, going to start with you again. Last couple of games were blowouts, um, but getting a few more guys out there on the court, the soft 9 or 10 man rotation. Yeah, uh, Florida's been my Achilles heel this year. I hit Walter Clayton one time uh, when he went berserk. I think he had like a 45 or a 46. Got paid on that one. But other than that, man, I have been – I've just been missing on these guards from Florida, and that's where you have to start. I mean, Walter Clayton at 7,400, like, he's that guy for them as far as, you know, shot creation, um, you know, putting up points for them. He needs to score for them to be successful. Uh, he's done a really good job, you know, creating as well, 20% assist rate. He's had 3% steal and block rate, so you love the stocks that he can produce. Shooting well from three at 7,400. Uh, he's another guy that it's it's kind of weird. Like you see these totals and you're like, there's going to be some dudes at these price points. Not not too often do you find this type of total where there's no one over 8K. So this is going to be a weird, weird, like even if the game goes under by 10 points, it's still 161. I'm like to think about it that way, you know what I mean? So for me, I, I do have Clayton um, as a, uh, you know, as a guy that I'm, I'm, I'm going to mix and match and I'm going to try to get, three to four guys uh it's tough to say four because it's a 12 game slate but if this game goes over like i just don't see a world where these guys uh don't get there now the florida side uh is a little bit scarier because these guys are a little more volatile than some of the kentucky dudes uh, zion pullen he's 6900 i really like him as well um now the last couple of games were blowouts right but you know he put up a 32 in one of the last two he's also got a 40 when it was a tight game so uh, that game did go into overtime but you know, usage rate is starting to climb. Uh, took them a little bit to get going. 28% assist rate, you know, shooting 43% from three. So I do love me some Zion Pullen. Uh, so Clayton and Pullen uh, really for me are, are, are going to be the guys that I prioritize on the floor this side. Will Richard, uh, shot dependent. You know how I feel about that. Uh, only a 16% usage rate just doesn't do a lot else. But if you look at his game log, like whenever he starts stroking it, he can go for, you know, 5X. Um and you're getting the salary savings off the other two guys, but you're not going to get the consistent usage. So in these, you know, these games with, you know, this type of pace, I want guys that are going to have the ball in their hands and guys with assist rate. Uh, so that's why I'm really looking at Clayton and Pullen. Uh, I've been burned so much, and I've lost so much money on Riley Kugel this year. Uh, and I just hate to see the price where it is, Eric. Like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just over at this point. So I think for me, I'm just really looking at Clayton and pulling who you got. Man, I've got, I've got secondhand embarrassment for Mike on Riley Google. This guy is just <laughs> burning, burning the captain seemingly every single slate. Like the, the thing that's frustrating about it is like 
his his rates, you know, they they support uh, a circumstance where he should be performing a lot better, right? Like, you know, this is a guy that people were talking about as like a potential SEC player of the year candidate, right? And obviously things haven't exactly played out that way. Um, you know, we we looked through his game logs in that last game. He, he didn't play 30, 30 minutes, you know, he's coming off the injury and then there was the, the blowout consideration. But I mean, that that talent and the way that they use him is is borderline elite, right? Like he should he should be a large field tournament option, right? Like obviously you're looking through his game logs, he's got you know 18s, 19s, 12s, 9s in there, like very risky to you know to click the button, but he's a way to get into this game. Like if this is the if this is the point where he pops off, you know, he could he could be, you know, a very fast way to climb up the pay scale, but it is not without its risks. And then kind of on the other side of the spectrum, we we got we got Tyree Samuel sitting here, right? 7.7K. Um, you know, his his rates are, you know, kind of around the the midpoint, very strong in the rebounding regard, 33% rebounding rate. You know, he's he's just he's a solid play, you know, probably more of like a single entry or cash game type of player. But there's nothing super exciting about about his, you know, about how this this slate sets up for him. Like because he's the most expensive guy on the Florida side, kind of kind of like we talked about with Reed Shepard a, a moment ago, like that's going to draw some ownership away from him. You know, the the thing that's that's worrisome is just like everything's got to go right for him to pay off 7.7K. Like you really need that double-double. He's He's got to have one of his better shooting nights from the field. And I mean, that's just – that's a lot of dependencies that you're baking into your lineup by, by rostering Tyree Samuel. If you think – I'm not playing Riley Kugel at 5.8K. Right? You are I have happy. said that at every interval. <laughs> every single time, yeah. Mistaken, sir. You are sadly <laughs> mistaken. Dude, opened at 8.1. That's the Riley Kugel. Stop. I've literally been losing. That's how bad you're telling me how much money I've lost. <laughs> 8.1 on Kugel. <laughs> yeah. That guy's I down some it. units. I believe Oof. it. But if you think I'm not... I'm not playing Kugel at 5.8. You are. Why outside. not? Right? Like it's a you're tournament option. Yeah, there's no way. You, there's no way you can touch him in tournaments under 100 get players. Or, I mean, it's just so right. Like, yeah, tournament only because of the the downside. Right? Like it's just it's there, I mean, but the upside is crazy. If you're trying, my, to my win guy put up. Game. My guy put up a nine. Yeah, like, of no, course the downside's the there, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm Mama with you, in the chat saying, I'm stuck on Google. I need therapy to get away. Hey, we're, we're here for you. <laughs> Come on. We are a support. Yeah. We, are all, we are all stuck on Google here, and it's going to happen, Mama Rocks. You know it is. Uh, <laughs> TGHH30 hopping in the chat as well. And Taylor. Mama Rocks there a couple of times. What's up, Taylor? How you doing, man? Thanks for dropping in. I love uh, the picture. <laughs> the dog out the window. Yeah, the dog <laughs> That's creeping. me looking for, uh, for that's, Riley Kugel. That's, Kugel's, Mike, uh, that's Mike looking points. at Riley Kugel's usage rates, <laughs> trying to figure out how this happened. He has a 25% <laughs> shot rate at 5.8. How do you not play him? Oh, that's a great first game. We're going to be all over that one. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Drop us a line in the live chat if you're watching live. Let us know who you're playing in that first game. Um, let us know, even if you're watching later on, you're catching up in the morning, like we know some of y'all do, uh, drop us something in the comments. Let us know if you are stuck on Google, like your boys are as well. Moving on now to another pretty good total here. 159 points. We've got North Carolina traveling to Clemson. Um, you know, so a couple of, you know, an 80 and a 79 here, obviously. So you gotta, you like that a little bit, North Carolina. 11th offensive efficiency, 27th defensive efficiency, and 39th in tempo. The first, that's the lowest tempo that we've talked about. We've talked about three teams, and 39th is the lowest so far. There's going to be some points scored in this slate, damn it. But uh, North Carolina is 271st in bench minutes used, so bottom half of the country there for sure. Clemson, 17th offensive efficiency. This is some great offensive teams. 50th defensive efficiency, a little slower, 210th in tempo, and 100. 78th in bench minutes used. Running it back to the captain here. Start with the Tar Heels. Kind of a soft nine-man rotation here for Coach. You know, uh, I, is, I guess I got to let go of this, right? Like, they're not making the tournament. I got to let go. Yeah, I got to let go, man. Else. 
This is something else that I can't let go of, like Google. I'm sorry, I can't. But go ahead, Mike. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about the Tar Heels. Yeah, man. Uh, RJ Davis been phenomenal. He's 9K. This is why you can't talk about Heber Davis anymore because we didn't think RJ Davis was going to be 9K in, in early January. So, and willing to pay for him. I mean, he's a guy that can get into the 40s, like, relatively easily. I mean, look at the shot rate, 31%. Assist rate, 21%. Chips in a steal or two here and there. Shooting 40% from three. Plays basically 38 minutes a game. I mean, or damn near the whole game. So, I mean, it's just it's just the price, right? Like, it's, it's 9K, so... Um, I feel like he's one of the safer, like, pay-up options on, on the slate uh, with upside. So, you know, it, it's you – know, I like the game environment as well. So, uh, you know, I'm going to find ways to get R.J. Davis in. You also have to like Baycott at 8,300. Um, his matchup with P.J. Hall is a little – you know, a little scary. We watched, man, oh, yesterday watching Omir and um, and PJ Hall go at it. Like uh, it was just a, it was like a price heavyweight fight. Uh, Hall fouled out, um, and that's the thing with these guys. Like they get to the free throw line a lot. So that's not to say that Baycott couldn't foul out, but you can't play the game like that, right? But that is some risk that you're you're running into when you have uh, you know the other guy on the other side who's uh, one of the top, I said one of the top ten players in the game right now. So you know two heavyweights going at it right now. Baycott at eighty three hundred. Uh, you know, just massive double double opportunity for you. You know, even a six percent block rate. So carrying his ceiling can get up to a forty. Um, so you get that seven hundred dollars savings too. Um, and then that pivotal forward spot that we always talk about, where we're trying to, you know, figure out what we're going to do with those three forward spots. Um, I do love the Harrison Ingram pivot at seventy five hundred. I played him a lot this year. He's been very profitable for me. Um, even at this price point, he still continues to deliver. Put up a thirty five last game. He's putting up you know, 30s and 35s consistently. So I like it. Um, you know, just kind of does everything, right? We've talked about how great of an addition he's been. He's another reason why the Tar Heels are where they are. Shooting 43% from the field, he gets you some stocks, a solid rebounder, can actually, you know, run your offense through him, a 14% assist rate from the forward position. So, yeah, these three, I, I'm having a hard time, like, putting them together. If I did put them together, I'd probably play Davis with Ingram. Um just to kind of get that, uh, you know, those, those assists, those threes kind of combined together. Um, but playing Baycott Davis is, you know, 17 three, that just feels a little too pricey. You're probably going to need this game to go over. So, yeah, if I had to list it out, price adjusted, I honestly still think RJ Davis is, is the is the best play. Um, you know, he's been a guy that's been into the mid 40s and gets you a 50. You know, Baycott's right there, maybe one, option 1B, and then Harrison Ingram you know, right there at uh, the old three spots since we have two at the uh, 1A and 1B. So, yeah, definitely like the Tar Heels uh, in this matchup. So uh, I think we got a few more comments popping through here. We yeah, got... I, I get that, Mama Rock. Seven real seven mm -hmm. real life points, 35 fantasy points there for Ingram. Yeah, it doesn't Isn't that matter. crazy? Can't bet on him getting 15 boards again. But I mean, that's... He's got so many outs, though. He can, <laughs> he can, he can, he can find a way to get it done. So, so it's kind of hard to... Kind of hard to be mad at, at any of those plays here. Then we got Mike Witzgall jumping in. Let's get this. Bro. Oh, Clemson money line. Oh, lock. Said lock it Ooh, in. the lock. Whoa. Money line. All right, Mike. Okay, Mike. coming out swinging. Mike coming out swinging. There we go. Like is that, that money, is, Mike? Is that, okay. Is that money, hey, Mike. Mike, if that's you, man, money, Mike, man, let us know. Let us know. <laughs> uh, and then we got Cam in there as well. Hall. Ooh. I think Hall has a big game. Talk about him in just a minute. We'll get to Hall soon, yeah. We're going yeah. to hop right over to that side here. Uh, oh, actually, wait. We got to go to – we got Eric. You got a couple of players here on this side? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a few people that we at least need to to touch on, right? Um, yeah. Cormac Ryan is is a, a pretty reasonably priced uh, option on, on the UNC side, right? Like 5.7K. You know, for me, he's probably a bit more of a stacking player than anything else. Like he's he's shown us that he can get to, you know, four x pretty reliably. R really, the the thing for him, you know, he's he's taken sixty four uh, three point attempts on the season. He's only shooting twenty eight percent from range. So like he starts to knock a couple of those down, and that's you know that's really where the the meat on the bone is for for him in terms of his upside. And realistically, like. At least in the context of tournaments, like you, you he's you know he's going to need this game to go over its total. He's going to need those threes to go in in order 
for for him to be you know on a, a winning tournament lineup. Um, the I mean the other name that we can mention here, like we're you know we're specifically talking about stacking partners for for the big three. You know we can we can go over to Seth Trimble. He's he's four point one k. Uh, you know a a nice reasonably priced way to to you know stack up the the Tar Heel side. I mean, if you want to play him as a one-off, you you can. I I like him to go along with, you know, Baycott or or Davis most specifically. The the thing with Trimble, I mean, he's he's played pretty well over these last two games, right? Like he's in the low twenties in back-to-back games. But you know, kind of like we've talked about with uh, a couple players on the slate so far, he's just one of these guys that like he needs a lot of things to go right in order to get to his ceiling. And you know, this is this is going to be a, a tough road environment, right? So. Maybe not the most likely thing for us to bank on, but nothing else like Ryan and Trimble, I think, are in the player pool, specifically where you're looking to stack the UNC side. We're just – we're not even going to talk about how Baycott is 8.3. <laughs> we're just going to gloss I, over this? I did. I did. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, like, he really, said it. though. Like, but here's you the mean deal. saying it with my chest. No, I mean, I mean like, say it. Yeah, he's 8.3. I know, isn't that crazy? This is nuts. Did he ever cross 10? 9.9 nine, nine looks like his highest. Yeah, wild. It's just the PJ, it's just the PJ Hall deal, man. I'm just nervous. That's yeah, a little bit of nerves. Also, PJ Hall can stretch the floor, so he can pull Baycott out of the and actually, Omir did that a little bit the last game, but you're right, Jay. Like 8,300 for Baycott. I mean, it, it's almost like borderline. You gotta have it in, and, and this would have been the, the correct time to bring in Cam's comment earlier about uh, Hall having a big game. So let's get to Clemson now and go ahead, uh, Mike, with P.J. Hall that you talked about earlier, who, who another guy that, you know, what do you know, does a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, man, I mean, like I said, P.J. Hall's just been so great, like the entire season, the last two games. I'm um, pretty, pretty tough on him, you know. So I'm back at home, uh, you know, expecting a bounce back performance from him. The rates are insane. Uh, Eighty-eight hundred, you know, the price. It's a, it's that's it's pretty good for you know what he can do as far as upside. So the question becomes, who's going to win the battle? Omir won the battle against Hall the other night. Um, who's going to win this battle? Which is why I can't play both. I can't play both guys. One, one, the price. It's just so expensive. Like you need almost a, you know ninety to hundred fantasy points from, and it's just a. Unless it's like overtime and both these guys stay out of foul trouble. It looks like Cam is jumping in here. He will be in foul trouble. Oh, he's talking about uh, Baycott. Baycott, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, th- like it's – Yeah, it's possible. The, the thing is, though, is that um, Omir really kind of just – his toughness inside with rebounding um, kind of hurt P.J. Hall. But P.J. Hall is able to stretch the floor and, and, and pull Omir out. So that's not something Baycott can do. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, you do love the you know five hundred dollars price savings like you talked about, Jay, to get to Baycott. Um, Baycott is on the road, and Clemson's looking to bounce back. So another another notch for Hall there, right? Especially since people are probably going to jump off the ship too when they see a twenty three and a twenty line. Those game log watchers, um, and he's the realm of possibilities of forty five or a fifty out of PJ Hall. Now that he's playing, praise the Lord, thirty plus minutes a game. Let's go, um, which you know, oh, now if you just get Janai Broom um, on that same same path would be uh, cooking with some grease. <laughs> one at Jani- a time. Come on, Bruce. Yeah, one at a time. But Janai Broom would be ten k at this point if he played thirty five minutes. But um, yeah, so PJ Hall, I mean, he's in the player pool for me. I'm going to use him. I'm probably going to. I'm thinking about playing twenty to thirty lineups tomorrow. So uh, I'm just excited about these Saturday. Um, got to get got to get ready, boys. So you know, Joe Girard at seventy eight hundred, um, a nice pivot option. Um, I don't, I don't really like the stacking options as much on the Clemson side as, uh, you know, as, you know, maybe a North Carolina stack, but you know, with Gerard, right. He's just been so consistent. I mean, basically you're, you're basically printing 35 fantasy points um, cash game, which is weird to say because he's so shot dependent, but when you're taking, you know, 32% of the team shots, it's like, <laughs> and and you can shoot as well as he does 45%. Um, so, you know, if you look at it, he feels cashy, but I think he's actually a little bit more of a tournament option because he is shot dependent. He doesn't have a ton of outs um, for cash other than making sure that he shoots you know, really well from the field. A uh, guy that uh, banked on the last couple of nights, uh, we've been waiting for this blow up, is uh, Chase Hunter, back-to-back 30s. Finally, now if Riley Kugel could just jump on board with that, we would be 
all set to go. Speak so, that into existence. <laughs> exactly. Chase Hunter, though, can have a very tough matchup trying to hang around, uh, you know, RJ Davis on the other side. This is a fantastic game. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to be locked into this one for sure. Um, you know, Chase, uh, you know, been very aggressive in that Miami game. Uh, still struggling shooting the ball from the outside. Um, shot rates aren't quite where Gerard and Hall is. So, uh, you know, those guys are taking over 30% of the shots uh, when they're on the floor. Chase Hunter's taking 22% of the shots, which is okay, but he's you know, not really going to give you any stocks or anything like that. So uh, definitely a volatile tournament play. And then these other guys, like Wiggins played a lot of minutes last game. Um, he shot dependent at 5,500. I don't really want to go there. Um, Dylan Hunter, uh, which is Chase Hunter's younger brother, uh, needs to be a very good player next year. Uh, but just right now, just tough game last game. But you look at the you know a couple of games before that, and he's put up some solid games. And they don't play very many guys on this Clemson side. It's really a seven-man rotation. So if anybody gets into foul trouble in this type of pace, in this environment, like Wiggins and Hunter and these guys, like they're going to have to play some minutes, man. Um, I got paid off on Shifflin a couple of nights ago because everyone went to P.J. Hall uh, on the slate. And I went to Shifflin, and he scored 33 fantasy points. Eric, uh, I don't know if I can go there with this price increase, man. What are you going to do with Ian? Yeah, look, I, I mean, he, he he paid off for you. All things considered, a three hundred dollars price increase isn't the craziest thing in the world, especially coming off of a, a thirty three. Right, he's got a thirty five and a thirty seven in his in his last five. So, like, he can he can reach back and do it. the The thing that is probably making you feel uncomfortable is he's got a fifteen percent shot rate. Right, so like, you basically, I mean, he has to double double. And he's probably got to chip in a little bit extra too, two percent block rate. Like maybe, maybe he he denies one close to the close to the rim. But ultimately, like this is a guy that's like he's he's in there willing to do the the, the dirty work, right? Forty three percent rebounding rate on a team with PJ Hall is just bananas, right? So, I, I mean, the the pricing is scary. Like you said, you need a lot of things to to go your way for him to pay it off, but like. I mean, you look through his his game log, like you're you're fine with those those mid thirties outings that he's put out here here recently, right? So he'll he'll be in the player pool for me. Um, you know, maybe not the the hugest priority, but you know, someone to at least consider as we find ways to get into this game and we find ourselves getting back into these comments. We've uh we've got a revelation here. According to Mike, the real money Mike equals MC Holland. You're the inspiration. He is simply money Mike 2.0. I think this is Sharon. Sup, my boy. Hey, how how you doing, huh? I'm how doing, you doing good. You doing good? We're doing all right. And then we got hey. Cam reminding us again that Baycott is going to be in some foul trouble. <laughs> there you go, Jay. Thanks to PJ Hall. <laughs> Screw your 8300. <laughs> I've got a live update here. Uh -oh. And it's not on my sweat where I may or may not ah. be sitting in first place. May it is with not. us trying something new. Posted a poll in the YouTube chat. And as we sit right now, 75% of respondents are saying they will play Riley Kugel at 5.8K. Oh, no. oh, my God. So and that makes me not want to play it. <laughs> me, me and Jay, we got all the sickos in the chat. We're ready to ride. <laughs> This is why I'm not playing him, and all y'all are gonna get paid, and I'm gonna be pissed off the next show we do. Probably we'll, that's that's, that's we'll very be likely. we'll be splitting it with thirty of our best friends, right? <laughs> yeah, <it's all> right. <laughs> <laughs> with our with our favorite breadheads. We love y'all and we appreciate y'all. Thanks for hanging out with us. That's a couple of games down in the showcase. Now let's get to our third showcase game: TCU and Kansas. Good old Big Twelve tilt here. Um, One hundred fifty-one point. Total looking at Kansas, uh, 79 to 72, the projected score. Uh, getting back up into double digits for these tempos with both teams. TCU is 32nd tempo. Kansas is 92nd. TCU, 52nd in bench minutes used. And Kansas, 353rd. Ooh, hey, no. All right, so here's the deal. Obviously, TCU plays a lot of guys. They run a lot of guys at you. They try to wear you out that way, use up all their fouls, all that stuff. Kansas is the exact opposite. Doesn't play anybody. But wait, flip that and reverse it. Put my thing down, flip it in reverse. <laughs> so TCU is tight on a So, all right, been using eight man rotation, Mike, but may get O'Bannon and Coles back for the full 10 man rotation. There's the 10 man rotation I'm talking about. Can we get it back 
And who are we playing out of these Horned Frogs? Yeah, uh, TCU's been a kind of a nightmare because they Jamie Dixon's been mixing it up. Uh, you, you don't know which guys are going to get, you know, right at 30 minutes. You, it's, it kind of reminds me of some Alabama situation, Arkansas situation, Auburn situations where, you know, you, you, you like the, the total and you, you like the names, right? Like Emmanuel Miller, he's 7,700. Um, he's kind of the safest guy with minutes. Um, but when you're playing fit, when you're you know, running out a bunch of guys, and you're 52nd in bench minutes, like you're just playing a ton of guys. So, um, you know, the, the usage rates there, the rebounding rates there, you know, 16% assist rate for Emmanuel Miller's nice shooting 36% from three. So you don't mind it. It's just a $7,700 price tag. I don't know that I can get to him. Micah Peavy, I mean, he's okay. He's seven K. I mean, you're at Kansas here. It's a you know the fifth uh, adjusted defense in the country. Uh, the game's gonna be fast. There's a lot of possessions, but it's it's kind of like throwing a dart to nail like which TCU guy is gonna go four to five X. So <sighs> Peavy, I, I like maybe a last man in. Like, and you just want to get into this game. Uh, I'm just I'm way more interested on the Kansas side because Kansas, you basically know who's on the floor the majority of the time. Um, you know, we gotta pay attention to this Jacoby Coles news. You know, he's questionable with the foot, he's fifty three hundred. Uh, you know, kind of before the foot injury, uh, you know, that played pretty well, but once again, like, you know, you got Cork there, you got Uday there. Um, it's just not it's just not safe. If he's out though, it you know, it feels a little bit better because now you're, you're you're spinning down to you know one less guy that you have to worry about. Avery Anderson, he got the start. Uh, he's kind of like the cheapest guy I would go with at 5,200. Uh, the Oklahoma State transfer. I mean, a 22% usage rate, a 22% uh, shot rate, 26% assist rate, shooting 34% from 30. Like, I mean, all these guys that just feel kind of dirty. Even even Nelson and Tennis and Eric like. I don't know, man. I don't know that I'm going to roster any TCU guy, even though they're in like the, what's this, like the third or the fourth highest total on the board. It's just a tough road environment, and they just play a lot of guys. Like, I, I, I'm thinking I'm just wanting to play some Kansas. What about you? Yeah, I've got kind of a similar read overall, um, at least according to the update here. Uh, apparently, Jamie Dixon said that he expects Coles to be available for Maybe Saturday's yeah. game. So, so another, <laughs> another person that's chipping away at the minutes for this TCU side, uh, like you mentioned, you know, we can we can talk a bit about Jameer Nelson, uh, Jameer Nelson Jr. Of course, um, I mean, I don't I don't think I'm going to find myself getting to him right. Like, you know, he's he's lost his starting spot, and that that obviously is is going to is going to weigh down his uh, his arrow a bit. You know, when, when he's on the court, he still has, you know, pretty solid rates overall. It's just that time on the court has diminished a bit, especially as this rotation continues to get wider and wider. I mean, for me, like, I'd, I would I'd probably look to save 900 bucks and go down to someone like Trevian Tennyson, right? Um, this is the guy who is now starting in, uh, in Jameer Nelson Jr.'s place. Um, you know, you, you get the salary relief there. I mean, he's also subject to this very annoying rotation. So, like, you know, Tennyson was, you know, a, a beast at, at at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Um, but kind of like you said, like, with so many guys out there, I'm just – I'm way more interested in the Kansas side of this game. That makes a lot of sense. Um, why don't we just hop right into that side here. And, Eric, I'm going to go right back to you where – Big four for Kansas play 35 plus, right? So, uh, I mean, it's the opposite end of the spectrum here from what we have with TCU. So, Eric, how are you approaching the Jayhawks? Yeah, I mean, I think they're what, like 100 and or 350th in bench minutes, right? Like the they, they've got they've got their their starters out there and they're they're running them into the ground. Um, I mean, anytime we're talking about Kansas, we we got to start with Hunter, right? Uh, 9.5 K, you know, he's one of these guys. Even even on a, a twelve game slate, like if you if you've got the salary, you're you're pretty much going to find a way to fit him in, right? Like he's he's arguably the top floor and ceiling combo on any given slate. Like I, I don't I don't think I really need to go out of my way to talk you into playing Hunter Dickinson, <laughs> right? Um, if you want to pivot, uh, you can save a couple hundred bucks and go down to Kevin Color, nine point two K. 
you know, he's he's probably the safest option, uh, at least in terms of like top tier or high tier guys uh, and on, on any given slate, right? The floor is just tremendous, plays like 40 minutes every single game, and the rates <laughs> yeah. are just insane, right? 27% usage, 26% shot, 23% assist. He chips, he dips, like, you know, you can you can play anybody on this slate, right? So, like, it's not hard to get to him. You know, he's probably a bit of a bigger priority if we're talking about single entries and cash games. But, I mean, really, you, you can't go wrong with either of the, the two top options here for the Jayhawks. But, Mike, like we mentioned, like, you know, their they're big four guys are soaking, soaking up all the minutes, all the usage. So, who are the other Jayhawks that you think we should try to weave in? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like you, man. Like, it, it's it's almost like what night – like, what, whose night is it? Like, the last yeah. game was Dickinson with the 54. The night – you know, the game before that, it was McCuller with the 55. Um, then McCuller edged out Dickinson by two, had the 43, you know. So, it's like, which one – one of them is going to put up 45 to 50, basically. And it's just, can you pick the right one? The matchup um, – it's it's literally a coin flip because they're play gonna play 40 minutes. You know, now that um Coles is in, you know, it's just one more body that TC you can throw at him, but it's not like <laughs> it's not like Hunter Dickinson hasn't played, you know, tougher, <laughs> you know, tougher yeah. guys. And so it's kind of like, man, you know, you kind of like the price savings from a color, but you know, these other guys, DeWan Harris, um shot rate, man, eleven percent. Uh if this was a slate where we had twenty seven hundred teams. <laughs> I would play Dewan Harris because he would be like the 0.0123% owned. Uh, and I would stack him with one of the two, you know, one of the two at the top. You know, been a little bit better now. Shooting 50% from three, which is weird. Uh, you know, high assist rate. Steal rate's down this year, so it's kind of limiting his ceiling games. I don't think you need him on the slate. KJ Adams, 6,800, like, it's just McCullough and, and Dickinson just do they just do so much <laughs> and take so many shots and rebound the ball so well. And they're the ones that you know get the blocks and steals that it's kind of tough for Harris and Adams to really reach back. It feels like it's like Jay would say, like it feels like these guys are a thousand dollars, you know, too too expensive. If they were fifty six hundred and fifty eight hundred respectively, we'd probably play them in tournaments a lot more. So it's kind of holding us back. You know, that fifth spot is that wing position. It's been a merry-go-round. You know, Marco Jackson uh, started off. Uh, you know, they've used some uh, Furphy. Uh, you know, they, they're they trying to get Nicholas Timberlake going. If you know, He was going for a few games, and it's just one of those things, kind of a revolving door. Marco Jackson played, you know, high 20s minutes the last game, so maybe he's kind of holding it down at 4,700. Uh, if, you, if you need to get a stacking partner, just want to get in there. I mean, I, I don't think you have to do it because these guys just soak up so much usage, Jay. Like, I just – I don't know, man. For me, I mean, who are you picking, Jay? Like, if you had to, if you had to pick one guy right now, would you pick Hunter Dickinson or would you pick Kevin McCullough on this slate? Well, well, first of all, that is future Wooden Award winner Hunter Dickinson. Just wanting you to let let you know. Absolutely. I, 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 yes. Okay. He's so also then, like eight foot two, right? He's at he's like nine feet feet tall by now. I think he's still growing after making this transfer here. Um, with that being said, for this slate tomorrow, I actually like McCuller better. Save a couple uh, of dollars there, and I'm just feeling like it's McCuller's turn. I'm going to lean in a little bit more into McCuller out of these Jayhawks. What do we got in the old uh, comment section here? Like chats. I think um I think we might have a well, new Amy's commenter cooking. here. Yeah, I, Amy is cooking know. tonight, man. On San Jose. Oh yeah, Playmaker Twenty Three Workbench. I don't think we've seen that name before. I don't think we, I don't think we've seen him before. If you are a breadhead, thanks for uh, thanks for for raising your hand and and chatting in with us. If you're new, thanks for thanks for swinging through, man. And yeah, Amy is out here. Amy's out here putting in some work, and it sounds like maybe it involves Amy, me and Cam. We're we're in this <laughs> joint sweat right now. I have Loving officially it. moved into first place of my tournament. What? So let's go. Just trying yeah, to uh, trying to stave off about a twenty five point lead with the few minutes left in this last game. So what? I will not be paying attention. I don't know where I am right now. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Me and Cam are in for we got a winner place. tonight, boys. We got a winner. What do I do? What do I do with my hands? 
<laughs> I never know. Anyway. If you don't know what it's to not do a with change. your hands, it's type on your keyboard and get in that live chat and say what's up. Trying to do is give Mike, or actually for tonight, let's give Eric a little fire emoji action in the uh, for luck in the in the old live chat. Hit those like and subscribe buttons if you already haven't. As we move on now to our final showcase game, which is Marquette, who are five point road favorites. At Seton Hall, 145-point total here. A couple of teams slated to score about 70 points apiece. Marquette, 25th offense efficiency, 9th in defense. Of course, you know what you're going to get out of the Shaka Smart Coach team there. 89th in tempo and 216th in bench. Seton Hall, 69th offensive efficiency, 86th in defense efficiency. And then we slow down a little bit with 279th in tempo. And hardly any bench minutes at all, 334th in the country there. So going to start again with my guy, Eric, the blue. Eric, the blue. Let me go back to you first, man. Only seven guys in that rotation last game against the Blue Jays of Creighton. And, of course, with the – who I consider the silkiest, <laughs> smoothiest guard in all of the land in Tyler Kolick. Yeah, and uh, and this is this is a a silky smooth status that he has been grooming for a couple of seasons now, kind of like last year. Like you know, get into get into conference play, and and we're seeing Tyler Kolick really start to come on. So, uh, you know, we we definitely like to uh, jump on board as that momentum is swelling. You know, the the thing for Kolick in this game in particular is like. He's he's really going to have to play well for for them to have a chance on on the road uh, against Seton Hall. You know he'll he'll get the Kadari Richmond matchup that is not ideal in terms of his primary defender, but I mean like so right. much of this offense just runs through through Kolick, right? Like he's 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 got to be in the player pool pretty much any any given slate, but he he does need a lot to go his way in order to pay off eight point six k. I mean right up there. Certainly not the silky smoothest, so maybe I'll walk this back a little bit. But one of our <laughs> favorite plays on Marquette, uh, seem, seemingly slated in and slayed out, a guy that just routinely is kind of a couple hundred dollars underpriced, right? Cam Jones, 6.6K. I mean, look, with, with Kolick's production, you know, really ramping up over the last two games, the last, you know, handful of games, I should say, Jones has been moving in, in the other direction. That's why we're getting a little bit of a, of a discount on him, but you know, it, it seems like he's he's in a really good buy low opportunity, right? Like part of the reason why I'm probably talking about him and not Mike is that we're talking about another guy that is very <laughs> shot dependent. But when when those shots go in, like he's he's got a you know, he's got 30, 35 plus point upside, very well represented on his range of outcomes. So don't mind getting to to Cam Jones, don't mind getting to Tyler Kolick. Mike, uh, one of one of my favorite plays from last year, Oso Ikadoro, sitting there around that same price tag. Is he is he kind of the the direct pivot off of a Cam Jones, or you may be going somewhere else with the Golden Oof, Eagles? Man, yeah, this is a I man. Seton Hall, <laughs> who I mean, Shaheen Holloway and the Saint Peter's Magic going right now. Uh, two huge quad one wins for them uh, in the last two games and. Man, they're just looking the part. So I'm a little nervous about this Marquette road game. You know, they're implied for 75. We know they don't – you know, they've, they've been playing some guys off the bench. It's starting to tighten up a little bit as we get into this, uh, you know, conference uh, conference season. So, you know, also at 6,800. Yeah, I mean, the shot rate's only 17%, but he does have a high usage rate. I mean, he does a you know, solid job of rebounding. He can get you a cheap double-double, um, block a shot or two. You know, the problem is, like, what's really the ceiling and and really you're probably looking at 35 to 37 38 i mean it's just it's tough for him to get 40 and for a tournament you probably want to be around there so i, I was hoping eager dar would come into you know that that 6.4 6.3 range yeah. uh didn't quite get there may have to wait for the uh the next slate but i don't mind the, the matchup um as far as like his individual matchup with Bidiaco on the other side like so, you know, he's not going to be owned. I don't think you really have to go there. David Joplin is another guy that's just shot dependent. Um, like the usage really goes through Cam Jones and Tyler Kolick. So, you know, for mm-hmm. Joplin, it's just another guy that's 500, 500 bucks. You know, he wouldn't be 5,600 if he didn't have that 39 from a few games ago. He would be right at 5K like he kind of is all the time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just 
just not really for me. Um, this market side kind of scares me. So I'm just going to, I'm going to play some Cam Jones in tournaments. Um, some of my, you know, it's like single entry type deals and in, in, in places where I'm not playing like an RJ Davis, uh, I'm not playing like a Kevin McCuller. Like I will play some color because I'm playing 20 to 30 lineups tomorrow. So definitely, uh, definitely going to have a little bit of exposure to Marquette, Jay, but it's a, uh, it's a little scary. I'm not going to lie, even though they're five-point favorites on Kim Pom. Well, and that worries me. Jones hasn't gone 5X at this price but one time all season, and that was in November. Like, yeah, what am crazy, I still right? paying 6.6K for at this point? Like, are we – You're paying for paying? the past, my friend. <laughs> well, we're, are, are we, You're are living we in the past. Are we, are we paying for the potential that we haven't seen all season long? Like, Yeah, that's I mean, a good point. Like, are we going to pay for this or not? Because it, it, I have a hard time paying. It, there's so many other mid-tier options, I feel like, that we could go to. I, it, I just It feels like there's a blow-up coming at some point. I just don't know that it's this spot, even though I'm going to try on a few few tournament teams. Uh, yeah. There's going to be a point where he goes for 35, 40. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> he's going to be basically a slate winner at this point because he's not going to be owned. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, that's, I just don't know if know, it's like a slate. To- we like to talk about the leverage there, right? And and what you can get if you don't, if if you think that, it, that there's going to be a lot of people thinking like me, like okay, how's he going to get there? Jones are talking about here, obviously. That's I don't know. It's tough, like you said, it has the potential to win you a slate, but that's tough for me to get there. Mike, I'm going to start with you here with Seton Hall. Um, four starters, Bibiaco uh, excluded, played 31 plus minutes the last four games straight. So we know it's another situation of it's it's instead of spin the wheel like at TCU where there's 10 players, <laughs> we're trying to spend a little bit and, yeah. and, and spin it between like four guys with Seton Hall. Yeah, so I, I hate saying this, but I, I like the Seton Hall side. Uh, 334th and bench minutes, you know the guys that are going to be out there. Uh, that's, you know, the pace up, Marquette 89th and tempo. They've been playing really well lately, Seton Hall has. Kadari Richmond sitting there at 8,400. Um, man, he's on triple-double watch pretty much every game right now. Um, I think he had like 12-6-6 six, and six at halftime the other day. So high usage, high shot rate, high rebounding rate for a guard. You know, he's a 6-6, six, 6-7 six, six, guard, point guard. Uh, 28% assist rate, 4% steal rate. Like, you see that 55 there, and you know he's gone back and gotten 40s. Like he's another guy where you just kind of spin the wheel on these guys like RJ Davis and that we just talked about and, you know, Colick and, and spin it, but you feel confident that in a pace up spot, as long as he does not get into foul trouble, which I've been burned so many times by him, uh, but the 8,400 price tag I and mean, he should be a nine K player. Uh, so yeah, I'll give me some Kadari Richmond, Dre Davis, you know, that guard forward eligibility, 6,800, um, He's kind of up and down. Another guy that I wish was maybe closer to 6K. Uh, you know, he's all right. Uh, it doesn't excite me. I would much rather go to Daiwusu, our boy from St. John's, uh, for tournaments. Like, the usage rate and the shot rate aren't great, but this is a guy, when you don't get that, when you get a 17% shot rate, you want the guy to be able to do other things, and he does that. I mean, he rebounds the ball well. He can get you some assists. He's got a high steal rate. He shoots a lot of threes. Uh, so when he does shoot, it's typically a three-pointer in the corner. Um, you know, a guy that can reach back and get you 30 and can get you a 40 spot every now and then for tournaments. Like if if this were, you know, a 2,000-man field for 10, 10K, I would I would feel much better about playing a Daiwusu where there's only 700 people in the, the, the $12 2K to first. Like I don't really know that you have to take like that type of risk. Uh, but a Daiwusu, you know, just one of those guys that, Nobody really ever plays. Uh, a lot of these Seton Hall guys doesn't like really other than Richmond. Like nobody else really, uh, really gets played uh, unless it's just uh, you know one of those like short slates uh, things well, like hey, that. So well, we talk about Davis here. Like, are there? there we talk about theory wise, game theory wise. There's certain slates where it's better to play guys with that guard for being able to slot one of those guys in a forward or something like that. Is there any advantage on this slate, like with Davis or somebody like that? Is, is there a way that Man. you would play this one way or the other, or is this just one of those things where you look at those rates and maybe at that price, it's it, it, it doesn't work for you regardless? Yeah, I think on this particular slate, um, we're going to talk about value, and there's a lot of guard value. <laughs> so um, 
probably going to play him at the forward spot because you probably, I mean, another, another slate where you're probably going to play five guards and three forwards. It's just been that kind of year. The value has been at the guard, guard, guard position. So yeah, I'm probably going to use Davis in the forward position. I, it, or okay. I would hit, yeah, I would, I would use him in the forward position. I don't know that right. I'm going to get to Davis. I'll play Richmond. Uh, I'll spin down to Dai Wusu. And then I don't know, man, like these other two guys, like Amir Dawes, man, he's on the floor a ton, Eric. And then just doesn't do much. And then Bidiaco is, I mean, He's kind of that guy that doesn't get the major minutes, but he puts up production. So kind of weird with these two guys, man, but maybe worth a shot with this, uh, this pace up uh, opportunity for them. Yeah. There's, there's like a clear line of demarcation between the the guys you talked through and the, the two that I'll, I'll cover here. Right. I'll, I'll talk, I'll start with, with Bidiaco. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's the other dude. He's one of the other dudes that's on the floor, right? Like there, there was a point where, you know, he was, he was posting into the into the high twenties until a couple of games ago, so you know that those outcomes are still in the mix for him. It's just he he doesn't he doesn't play big minutes, right? But if if you look at his matchup, like Marquette, you know they tend to struggle against bigs. It's been a matchup that we've been exploiting all season long. So I mean, you could you could do worse than than go into a you know low six k guy who's got a thirty seven percent rebounding rate and an eight percent block rate in a matchup that favors bigs, right? Like this could be like that, you know, one, two percenter in a large field that is, you know, is, is, is a potential slate breaker, right? His, his usage is still solid 20%. Like it's, you know, it's, it's nothing to write home about, but it's, you know, it's, it's not one of these rotation guys that's out there getting, you know, eight, 12% usage. Like there, there are ways that, that BD Yako can get it done for you. And then you, you mentioned Alamir Dawes as, as kind of the, the last piece of the puzzle here. Um, he's out there a ton. Really, the thing for him, like, I mean, you 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 said that that Dylan Adiawusu is is out there shooting a lot of threes. Alamir Dawes is taking ninety four three point attempts on the season. Like, <laughs> he's doing his best. Caleb Love never met a shot that he didn't like. Um, because of that, shot dependent. We don't like playing these guys in the five six k range, right? So, like, you know, every five or ten games or so, you know, more of those shots will go in, and he'll you know he'll get you to thirty, but. More often than not, right? Like he's in like the mid to upper teens, you know. Every now and again, again he'll he'll pop off. So, you know, if you want to get weird, you can you can sprinkle Alamir Dawes into a tournament. But of these, you know, of these two guys that are kind of outside of that main rotation, I would probably err on the side of Bidiaco. In a in a one and done first, uh, Caleb Love catches a stray. It's not, <laughs> it's not from me. Okay, <laughs> that's a. A first on one and done. Um, I like Bidiaco so much in this spot. Um, even you see, there's three games out of the last five where he's gotten 29. That's you. This is the type of mid range play where if you get four and a half K, yeah. uh, four and a half X, I should say, like you're pretty happy with that <laughs> yeah. out of Bidiaco. So I really like him a lot in this. Spot. Those are the four showcase games that we ran through today. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Leave us a comment in that live chat if you're watching live. Leave it in the comment section if you're watching afterwards. Mama Rocks cheering on Eric and Cam. Eric, I need an update, please. Uh, there was quite a large update in terms of points from that late game. So. My uh, my lead isn't looking quite as cushy as it was, but Ooh. we're still sitting up top for the moment. Uh, if all of the lights and electricity could go out in that San Jose State game, <laughs> that would be pretty sick. But I don't know if that's if that's going to happen until uh, until the Ravens play the 49ers in the Super Bowl again. Yeah, <laughs> love a good call back there, Cam. Let us know how you're doing as well in that live chat. If any of you other Folks out there, broskies or broskets are uh, sweating one out. Let us know in the comments. Also, you can find in that live chat and in the comment section or in the info, wherever it's going to be, is the DK link to our 20-person tournament right there flashing up on your screen. 20-person $3 contest. Hop in there with your broskies, and let's have a little bit of fun here. Um with one and done with your boy, with your boys, green screens media. And don't forget Napesy hustle. You know, he's not too far away ever, you know, follow our guy at the real Napier. He'll be on Sunday. And he will be on Sunday for the old recap show. You, 
Y'all have been around for a while. You're getting used to seeing Nate on <laughs> Sundays. You know, I'll float around in the DFS shows and Nate showing up. Who knows what you're going to get? The, what combination are you getting? It's the flavor of the week. With We are no flavor of the week. Because we, unlike some people who are hopping right back in to college basketball after a lengthy stay away, Oof. we've been here year round and we will continue to be. You know we're here all the time talking college hoops no matter what the time of year and what better way to learn and talk. And, you know, we're talking game theory. We're talking starts and sits. We're talking plays and fades. Let's hop into those plays and fades right now from the other eight games on this slate. And guess what, boys? I'm going first. I have the microphone, so you will listen to it. Oh, I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. My play, Devin Carter, guard Providence, 8.9K, going to Creighton. Um, yeah, that's uh, that Hopkins injury, guys. Cool. Uh, I've never seen anything like that before, right? Like, this is uh, – that was tough to watch. So, in the high tier for my play, I'm going Devin Carter here, 8.9K. Um, that puts Carter right up there, as uh, as Tiger Woods like to say, big dog. You know, he's up there at the top, 40-plus <laughs> in three straight, even with Hopkins on there. And if, um, if the Friars are going to win, they better get that kind of production out of Carter, and I think we're going to see it. My fade! Tolu Smith, the forward from Mississippi State at 8K. Um, first game back, obviously, uh, last time out, 29 fantasy points. Um, had the injury in the preseason or whatever. But this is uh, this is not exactly the matchup that I would like to see in the second time out here on the road. Tough matchup. Too expensive for um, – for a guy, we might see those minutes throttled still, right? He's still coming back off of that injury. So I'm going to wait a couple more games probably before Fire and Smith up. But I will be playing Carter in that high tier of 7,500 and above. Let's go to Eric for his play and fade in this high, so high tier. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm gonna break the rules here a little bit. I'm going to give you an option when we talk about our plays, an option or not? <laughs> yeah, why dude, we, this is the core four or more why? or plays or fades. <laughs> uh, my first play option, I'll go to this Creighton game. Baylor Shireman, eight point four k against Providence. I mean, the the dude is just so steady, right? And on the other side of that coin, a suddenly white hot Trey Alexander, eight point two k. So basically, the same price tag, right? Like. These are these are guys that you're you know you're you're kind of flipping a coin with. They're playing 35 minutes plus on the regular. They're taking 20 shots and they're contributing in a ton of different ways, right? Like I I think the I think the delineation for me, Shireman is probably a little bit more of a cash play, right? Like just steady in the upper 30s, you know, even into the the low to mid 40s, pretty much every single game. Trey Alexander, I mean, if we go back a couple of weeks ago, this is the guy that. Mike was talking about being pot committed to, right? Like we're just going to keep going there because we know these big games are coming. Fortunately for him and for Mike's bankroll, those big games have been coming over these last three or four. So probably a little bit more of a tournament play with Alexander and Shireman and option for cash. For my fade, I'm going to go down those country roads over to Raekwon <laughs> Battle. 7.9K, got that waiver finally. He's only played three games on the season. Played well enough in those games, right? He's coming off a couple of 40 spots, a near 40 spot in that first game. It's just going up against the number one defense in those Houston Cougars. Not exactly the point where I want to I want to shell out 7.9K, right? A $1,200 increase on this guy. There's going to be better spots. I mean, look, he he can certainly stay hot, but you're you're taking on a lot of risk going up against that tough defense. So you may not want to bench for me. You may not want to shell it out. You may not want to shell it out, but country roads take me home to the place. To the place. I belong. I belong. It was coming. Anytime I, I, I told you I had, I sent in the group chat before and I sent the spice Dude. Adams meme. When I, when I see West Virginia on the slate, that's what my vocal cords are doing. They're like, it's coming. 
It's coming. Yeah. I like I've been hitting, that. hitting the saltwater gargle, just getting nice and warm. You know, that's right. You know, you that's gotta right. be ready. Uh, it's showtime, baby. Alexander is not going to be in the core four later. Spoiler. Okay. But maybe he should be. Okay. I, I think Trey Alexander's in for a big one. He's one of my favorite plays that is not going to be in our core four. What else do we got? Mike, have we hit you yet on the, on the, on the, on the high tier? No, we haven't. Go ahead, Mike. No, no, we got to go big cliff, man. Cliff Rutgers. We didn't talk about this game, man. This is a big, big total, big pace up spot for our guys at Rutgers over in Piscataway. Um, (laughs) <laughs> 7,900, man, at that forward spot. We know he has 40, 50 fantasy point upside. We know Iowa get struggles against those bigs. So as long as Cliff doesn't get two fouls in the first three minutes, he is probably going to go bonkers. And then I will fade Josh Duro at 8,100. That Hopkins injury is creating um, all kinds of change for the uh, for the Friars here. You know, Aduro's a guy that a couple of games ago hit that 53 spot. The Kalkbrenner matchup is uh, its going to be a tough one. <laughs> Kalkbrenner, two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. So um, I'm going to be using value on Providence, or like Jay, I like the spend-up option, um, you know, here with Devin Carter. So I will be fading uh, Josh Aduro uh, until he probably gets back down into the, like, low sevens or at least gets into, uh, you know, a peso spot or just a better matchup than this It's uh you know, not against Creighton and Kalkbrenner. That makes sense. I would much rather wait a little bit for that price to go down as well. Um, plays in the high tier, Devin Carter, Baylor Shireman, or Trey Alexander, because Eric doesn't follow the rules, and and our guy Cliff, of course. And then uh, Fades, we're not playing. Fighted. Tolu Smith, Raekwon Battle, or Josh Oduro. Mama Rocks. Uh, you knew I was going to bring it. Like I said, every time I see them on the slate, <clears throat> la, 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 la. You know, you get a little, little saltwater goggle like like Eric says. Yeah, you know, Myron throwing up there, Hopkins. Yeah, that was tough. You know, he was a must play. Um, it was tough to see him go down. And he's doing so, so much for them. Yeah, and you know who's gonna who's gonna pick up that slack and and if if it was possible for Carter to shoulder any more of that load, we're gonna find out right away, and that's why he's a key play for me tomorrow. Well, let's not say tomorrow. Let's say Saturday for those watching after we film. Let's get to the mid mid tier here. That's five k to seventy four hundred. Um, we got a little, uh, maybe a little, maybe a little theme here. We got a little theme Uh-oh. working on later on. Yeah, we got some teammates on some plays here. But first, all right, you know what? Even after I said it earlier, we're going in or. I'm going in or. <laughs> my guy, you gonna roast me? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. just immediately step on my gimmick? Come on. I mean, you kind of, you kind of. You know, that's that's what I do. I'm sorry. So I do Jamal Shed or LJ Cryer. Okay. Seven seven point one K for Shed. Cryer seven uh sorry. Shed seven point one. Cryer six point seven there. All right, against West Virginia. Um we know that Shed has five X upside, right? High assist, high steal rates. Uh Cryer's more shot dependent, but um you're getting a haircut there on the price tag, four hundred bucks. And the the potential to get up there, the the thirty plus upside, uh, might make for a good tournament play there. So um, I will go shed or cry, or even though I just you know rode my guy Eric for doing it earlier, and I am fading. I am not gonna go DJ. That's not my DJ. Sorry, I can't do it. Horn DJ Horn, the guard from North Carolina State at six point nine k against Virginia. Um, I think I got to stay away from West Virginia and NC State here just because of the matchups. Um, yeah, this uh, this is tough. The matchup against Beekman, I don't like it at all. So, Peyton Horn playing Sheed or Cryer. Eric, what are you going to? All right. We'll uh, we'll just we'll keep plugging on away with uh, with this new format going back to the teammates here for my plays in the mid tier. Going to go with a couple of Iowa teammates to to get us moving. 
a couple of guys that are right next to each other. We've got Freeman at 6.9K, and we have got Peyton Sanford um, sitting there at 6.6. So, you know, both of these guys firmly in the mid-tier. You can get a little bit of salary relief going to Sanford. With Freeman, like, you know, this was this was his first game with major minutes and went, you know, 41 in that last game. So, you know, definitely like the way that he's trending. Sanford, high usage, high shot, lot to like there. You know, the, the Iowa bench minutes have have been a little bit annoying, but as we've gotten into conference play, you know, those rotations are starting to tighten up. We're getting a little bit of a better picture. And, you know, Rutgers, they, they've always been, you know, pretty stout on the defensive side. They've always been a, a slower team, but they're they're not playing quite as slow this year as they have in years past. They're they're yeah. up to 216th in tempo. That Good is call. much faster by their regard, right? So I think you can go to Freeman. I think you can go to Sanford. Either of these are are perfectly viable options in the mid tier. And then for my fade, we'll head over to a Mississippi State. Going to talk about Bell here, Jimmy Bell Jr. 5.8K. I mean, you talked about Tolu Smith earlier. You know, that is throwing a wrench in Bell's minutes and usage. And look, the the road game at South Carolina, like that's not doing him any favors, right? So a little bit too much of a dynamic situation for me to feel good about playing Bell. Mike, are we going to make it a clean sweep here? Are you going to give us a couple of teammates to choose from <laughs> for your plays? I love a good theme, but I love Cam's comment here. Uh, Freeman scares him on the road, uh, Owen Freeman. Uh, yeah, true freshman, tough task. Sanford uh, says he's going to, you know, says he's going to shoot a lot tomorrow, and then Perkins will too. Yeah, you love a tight Iowa rotation because they play so fast, and the Rutgers, you know, like you said, not playing uh, as slow as they used to. And then also Caitlin Clark uh, did drop about 65 fantasy points on Rutgers today. She would be like 12K on uh, <laughs> on DraftKings. So. Price and, 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 and we'd pay for it. Yeah, absolutely. We'd pay for it. <laughs> um, man, she's so good. Those Steph Curry, like beyond Steph Curry range, it's crazy. So fun to watch. So fun. But uh, my play is, um, hey, how about this? I'll, uh, I'll, f- I'll put my name down, flip it, and reverse it. I'll go over to the, uh, the Rutgers side, my friend, uh, Derek Simpson here. 6K, uh, man, like 40 and a 32 last couple of games. Uh, I mean, you could say it's time to hop off, but then he gets Iowa in the pace up spot. So, uh, you know, I'm feeling it right here. I'm definitely feeling it. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll play some Simpson. Uh, Hyatt also at 6,400. Probably not going to be popular at all because Simpson's right there, $400 cheaper. And this is a guy that takes a lot of shots, does a lot for this team, can get you into the 30s. So I don't mind him as a like a low tournament play for sure. So those Rutgers guys, you can't get discount them. I think this is like the fourth or fifth highest total on the board. So you definitely want to try to get into this. Um, for my fades, man, I'm going to this. We haven't talked about Arkansas and Auburn yet. I mean, it's a high total. Uh, but Devo Davis, mm-hmm. like just so volatile. I mean, it's – I lost. I lost so much money on him earlier in the year. Uh, put up a 38 last game, but that was a wild game. You know, before that, an 11 to 10. You know, muscle in those rotations. It's just, I'm just not going to take a shot at him at 6K. So, if he burns me with another 30, um, yeah, just so be it. But Devo Davis would be my fade. Uh, do we have another uh, another comment here, fellas? If UVA loses another road, I swear, folks in the Hoosville – are going to have a meltdown. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't – that's going to be a tight game. I mean, Ken Palm likes it to be a one-point game against North Carolina State. So, we'll see, man. Um, Beekman's got a lot lot to carry there. Sorry, I was looking at that at that, uh, at that that total. Yeah, that's a tough one. And, you know, you can you know we're talking basketball and not football when we're talking about playing guys from Iowa and Rutgers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah thanks for hopping in the comments there myron let's get to that uh low 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 tier before we hit that core four and get out of here um so this is 4900 and below all right eric i guess was a trendsetter in the first uh in the first uh the high tier or whatever and uh everybody's doing it i'm gonna keep doing it in the low tier gonna go teammates here flipping a coin between Jaden pierre or Corey floyd uh, for Providence, 
both some super great value at the guard position. Pierre is 4.6K. Floyd's coming in at a very, very agreeable 3.6. That injury to Bryce Hopkins has opened up some value. These, these prices maybe haven't caught up yet to what they may be as this usage sort of gets sorted out. Um, Pierre's going to get more usage. He's going to start. But, um, if, I mean, if he starts, then Pierre's going to be that guy. I don't know. Floyd, this is going to be something. we got to pay attention to this because Floyd's either going to start or I feel like he's going to have a bigger role just coming off the bench anyway, come off a player or two earlier, depending on how things go for the Friars. So, I mean, you know, we've seen two, a couple of games out of Floyd in the last four where he went for 20, which at 3.6 – uh, you can dig that. Yeah, and that was with Hopkins that was in those games. Um, so, we'll... yeah, exactly. So we'll see what happens there. But get in on these guys now uh, before those prices really go up. Who are you playing here in the low tier, Eric? Yeah, Myron got his kicked off talking about this UVA game. Uh, so I'll, I'll go to a couple options here for Virginia. You've got. Uh, you got Jake Groves coming in at 4.8K. Um, he is the forward here for, for Virginia. Or you can look over at Andrew Rohde, uh, 4.8K in his own right, the guard option. I mean, look, the, the rotation is tightening up for, for the Virginia side as it is with most teams this time of year. The the starters are, are getting up to 30 minutes now, right? So, you know, not not a ton of run available for, for these guys. They they aren't really high usage guys, but they're you know they're decent in a pace up spot. the The thing that you know would probably be the tiebreaker for me, it's uh it's kind of hard to come by uh decent salary relief at the forward position. So going to Jake Groves at four point eight k as a forward would probably be my lean. But again, you know this is this is a team getting paced up, so both of them will be in the pool. Mike, close us out with one more pair in the low tier. Yeah, I got to look at Arkansas and kind of what Musselman's been doing here. You know, Manyfield, part of the uh, part of the old crew with the old waiver uh, <laughs> situation a few weeks ago, dropping a forty-five piece. Seeing the minutes go up uh, consistently yeah, in his first do. three games, forty-six hundred. You love to see it. It is a high total. Uh, a little risky. A little risky. Anything with Arkansas is risky. Um, and then Jalen Graham. Finally, you're playing Jalen Graham, who was really good a couple of years ago at Arizona State. Kind of got lost in the shuffle with all these transfer portal guys that <laughs> Musselman brings in every year. He's only 3,900. Played solid minutes last game. Got up to 25 fantasy points. Um, you know, we're kind of seeing a weird shift right now. Uh, you know, laden blocker, uh, you know, no longer really getting in the rotation. Uh, so you're seeing some some guys that were in the rotation that are kind of falling out of the rotation. So for Arkansas, you know, Minifield and Graham are going to get these minutes at at this price. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to take some shots because the total is, is is pretty high. So I uh, definitely like those two. Makes a lot of sense there. And uh, you might hear Minifield's name again very shortly, hanging around here for the core four. But before we get there, make sure, make sure, make sure – you show your broski some love by hitting those like and subscribe buttons, following us all on Twitter, X, whatever the Elon's hellhole you want to call it. Hop in that live chat, hop in the comment section afterwards, and show us some love for the world famous, not one, not two, not three, but core four and more core four coming up because we're going to not only give you the cash game core four, but also the tournament core four. So let's start. Clean slate right there on your screen. And we are going right to Mike's Razorback play. Keon Minifield, 4.6K. I don't know, and especially in a cash game, I love the floor here. I'm all over Minifield. Then we're going to go, of course, to Mike's other boy, in Trey Mitchell, who, yeah, you heard Mike say, which, again, obviously for DFS purposes, you know, you know, Mike talked earlier about the offensive prowess of Trey Mitchell and didn't talk about the defense. Who cares about all of that? Just click the button at 7.1K in your cash game. And uh, we're going to spend up a little bit here. Baylor Shireman for Creighton at 8.4. And then the price king buried the lead here. Hunter Dickinson 
is in my cash core for at 9.5k, leaving you 5.1 per player to mess around with. So you know, who knows? Maybe you maybe you drop a Corey Floyd in there, and then you see how much you got left for a player after that. You know, who knows? It's 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 gonna be a lot. You know, what what do we say here, Mr. Producer Man? Can we drop Field in there? And uh, I'm sorry. I mean, Floyd in there and see what we got. What, what are we working with after that? Not I can't bad. See. You got it. You got five point six k after that. If see, you uh, if you drop if you drop Floyd in, Woo. and that is that is while rostering the Price King and another mid eight k player, right? Like, yeah, you uh, you got some flexibility on tonight's slate. That's kind of been the theme, right? Well, speaking of flexibility, let's clear that one out and move to the tournament core four. Actually, you can leave Corey Floyd in there. Okay? Ooh. Love the range of outcomes here. And if he hits that ceiling at 3.6, we are making some cash, making that, getting that bread, baby. So let's put Corey Floyd right in there in the tournament core four. We're going to go Walter Clayton, guard from Florida. We talked a little bit about He's that game earlier. It's 7.4K. The cover boy of course, of tonight's show. Antonio Reeves for Kentucky Wildcats at 7.5. And then, of course, he's not hes not uh, from where everybody knows your name. Not that Cliff from Cheers. No, no, no. This is Cliff Amorie, and he's going to be in Amori of my lineups tomorrow hey. at 7.9. Oh, hey. Oh, 7.9K there. So, 59 per player left after the tournament core for obviously Corey Floyd helps a lot there, but we filled up the top of, you know, it's Mike was talking earlier. This might be one where it's uh, it's five guards and three forwards tonight. There's so many guards here in play at, uh, at a low price here, Minifield and Floyd leading the way there. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a great one. You've stuck it out with us here um, an hour and 20, what is that, 26 minutes in. We appreciate you, you know doing this. that. So let's close this thing down. We're going to go first to the captain for his closing comments. Yeah, uh, big slate. So obviously, you know, covering, covering 12, 12, first, like, massive Saturday slate. So looking forward to it. You know, we even talk about St. John's and Villanova. Some interesting one-offs like Soriano's 8,500 price decrease. Jenkins mm-hmm. plays a ton, high usage. Ledlam always been playing that mid tier, and on the other side, like Dixon and Burton at that forward spot, um, definitely interesting as well. Eric, what uh, what say you to close this thing out, my friend? Yeah, I mean, we can kind of say the same thing with Georgia and Missouri, right? Like there, there, there are so many different ways to attack this slate. You know, in in this game in particular, uh, Noah Carter. Tamar Bates for the Tigers, you know, you could you could look at RJ Melendez for the Bulldogs. I mean, look like for me, like we're we're rotating around these cores and we're we're just gonna have to kind of pick and pull from the rest of these games. But fortunately, enough roster flexibility to kind of get wherever you want to go. Gentlemen, we only mentioned Minifield and Graham in a game with the third highest total on the slate. Okay, there is going to be some value to be had. We got to find it. We hit on a lot of them tonight. Um, Arkansas, Auburn, it's going to be fun on the eyes, but not so fun up here for the old noggin. It's probably going to be a headache for DFS purposes with both teams just running so many guys out there. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Auburn, ninth in bench minutes, Arkansas, 92nd. You could look at, you know, we mentioned Broom earlier. Right, you could go there, um, but we'll see. So it's, it's going to be. I'm just so happy to be back. We're happy that everybody was here with us tonight. Um, appreciate y'all showing back up after a couple of weeks of being off. You know, like obviously the guys were here uh, live before lock yesterday, but I'm happy to be back in the host chair, hanging out with y'all. We appreciate you, and it's only going to ramp up from here, y'all. I mean, I I said it in the cold open. Everything else is slowing down. It's college basketball time, and we've been here year-round. We haven't stopped, and we're not going to continue. I mean, wait, hold on. We're not, we're going, we're not going to continue to stop. We're going to continue to not stop. I got it. We got there. We ain't stopping. Can't stop. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. There we go. Get the ditty. Ditty shaking. All right. Make sure you keep hanging out with your boys. 
hit those like and subscribe buttons. Turn the notification bells on too, so you know when we're going live. On a day on Saturday, so many ways to build on this slate. We're happy you chose one and done to figure out how to do it. Shout out to Cam, Taylor, Nate, Mama Rocks, Myron, Playmaker, Money Mike 2.0, Sam and Sharon. Hopping in that live chat. Make sure you do the same in the comments if you're watching later on. Have a great day. Take care of yourself. Let's get this bread, baby. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.